hello everyone and welcome back. This is Beulah from the D. Brooks School of Law training manual videos. Ah, my, my, my. The excitement that has been circling around our videos is amazing. And I just want to thank all of y'all. And and just get, the feedback is amazing from everybody about the videos. I just can't. I cannot answer the questions in the comments quick enough. So thank you so much for all of your interaction with us. Okay. Now, we're going to continue on with uh, the cross-examination of Detective Carpenter. Now, if you'll remember, as we said in our last video, Detective Carpenter is the one who uh, lied to Mr. Brooks and told him that he was only being detained for, uh, you know, some kind of domestic disturbance or something like that. And what happened was... He really had suspicion that Mr. Brooks was, well, we don't talk about that part in the School of Law Training Manual videos. Mr. Brooks does not like to keep that part in, so we won't go there. <laughs> we'll just keep that off to the side. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, so anyway, this is part two. Part three is going to be dropping a little bit later on. If it don't drop at the end of this week, I'll have it next week for everybody. <laughs> You stated that there were some uh, loitering and prowling allegations. Why, to to your knowledge, was were those ever charged? Grounds. Oral, the witness may answer. No. And do you recall why not? No. So why did you constantly tell the detainee that they were being detained for loitering and prowling if you in fact knew that there were there was another reason why they were being detained? Objection asked and Where answered. <coughs> oh, sustained. That's the form of the question and assumes facts not in evidence. What was the significance of the FBI being present? The significance of the FBI presence was the early on concern that this was a terrorist style event. And you said that this was a terrorist element and what, what is the this? Can you explain what the this is? When you drove your vehicle through the parade and struck people. Which at the time you stated you did not know as fact, correct? That was still being investigated, yes, but I know that's what occurred now. Now versus then. Initially, it was unknown if you drove. That's that's what I was stated. That was the question. But the investigation showed that you were the driver of the vehicle. May reference to uh, a car key being found. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Did you yourself find the car key? No, I did not. Were you told by other law enforcement? I guess told what exactly? That a car key was found. I was not specifically. Your items that were located on you during the search were turned over to Detective Stern, and the car key was one of those items. And to the best of your knowledge, you didn't have that information at the time, correct? At which time? At, which, at the time that uh, at the time that the detainee was detained in the substation. Thank you for that clarification. Go ahead and answer. I just want to make sure I, un I guess that I understand. So you're asking me what 
I knew about the key or if I knew where it was found at the substate, I don't understand. Can you clarify that, sir? Uh, I guess the clarity that you may be looking for is what was found and brought into the substation. Okay. The Ford ignition key and other items that I alluded to in my earlier testimony include your photo ID and credit cards with your name or debit card, credit and or debit cards with your name on them. That you did not search and find yourself, right? <clears throat> That's correct. Did you conduct any searches? I don't recall if I did or not of your person. So it'd be fair to say you don't know where certain items were found at the time that you learned of there being items found, correct? No. No, as in? No, I knew those items were found on you in the search. Maybe not the specific pocket, but I knew the officers found those items in your possession. Were you, were you at the scene of the search? No. So how do you know where they were found? Because they were turned over to Detective Stern as your property. How do you know where they were found though, if you weren't at the scene? Because I was aware officers searched you and it's not reasonable to believe they were randomly in the grass at the house you were at in a city that you've indicated you're not familiar with. Uh, can you strike that last answer from the record? I didn't refer to any house, grass. Um, you asked city. an open-ended question. His answer will stand. Your request is denied. So it'd be fair to say that in the question, I did not mention a house, grass, or a city. That'd be fair to say? You didn't mention it, but I know you were found at a house in the city of Waukesha. And I know you're not familiar with Waukesha because that's what you told me when I interviewed you. Can you strike that last answer? Uh, request is denied. On what grounds, Your Honor? You asked the question, he answered it. If you want to limit, ask leading questions and direct him. Right. You, made, cross. you made reference to the house where the, the detainee was found, the grass, the city. Could it be possible that that's where they were found? The items that you are referring to? No. Even though it would be fair to say that you were not present. Correct. Well, hmm. sometimes things just do not go as we plan them. But there's always tomorrow. And here at the Deebrook School of Law, we just look forward. We stop, we drop, we roll, and we move on to the next day. I, I think that's what they said. Is that what they told me to say? Yeah, that's what they told me to say. We stop, drop, and roll. And, and then we move on to the next video or, or, or the next training day, that is. So, once again, thank you for coming in and all your support. If you have questions for Mr. Brooks, you can leave them in the comment section below. And, um... If he ever gets internet access at the jail, he'll be able to answer some of your questions. But I cannot make any guarantees. It, just like we have in our disclaimer at the Daryl Brooks School of Law, we cannot guarantee that what we tell you to do, what we instruct you on, you know, the different techniques that we show you, there is no guarantee that they're going to work to get you off your charges. So, with that being said... Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending our class. 
and we will see you in the next D. Brooks School of Law Training Manual video. Good day.